Now, because that loan to value is still high, the bank can still charge all of those things, right? They can still charge the discount point. They can still charge the loan origination fee. They can do all of that. They can even charge PMI because the LTV is above 80%. So there are some other... There are some fees that are involved that make that FHA monthly payment higher because you got a PMI fee and you've also got that MIP. You've got you got to pay that fee to use their money or to use their co-signing ability. And because the high loan to value, you've got a, uh, a PMI payment. All right. And we talked about this, that there used to be freely assumable loans where you could just call up and go, hey, take Bob's name off, put Raymond's name on, and we're cool, okay? Now, let's go back and revisit that judicial foreclosure. I told you when you get in trouble and the bank forecloses upon you and the judge says, no, Raymond, you are not supposed to get 19 months without a payment. You are wrong. You are guilty. You are foreclosed upon. And if you can think back in that example, we talked about that I owed 97500 It really doesn't matter what number it is. That was the outstanding balance on my loan. And the bank foreclosed upon me. And the judge says, no, Raymond, you were not allowed to. You are in violation. I am foreclosing upon you. I now order you to give the bank 97500 And I'm like, uh, judge, hey, I don't have any money. And the judge says, well, that's fine. We are then going to e invoke the mortgage which uses the house as collateral, so you need to give the bank the house. And I told you that the bank really doesn't want the house. They want their money back. So what the bank does is go, okay, we'll take the house. And they put the house under their arm, right? And they take that house, and the first place they go to is the sheriff to sell that house at the sheriff's sale. And think back about all of that we talked about, about uh, deficiencies and all of that. But let's say the sheriff doesn't sell the house. So they call the lender back and go, hey, dude, we were in, had the auction yesterday. Your house did not get sold at auction. You need to come and get your house because I couldn't sell it. So the lender comes back. They grab their house under the arm and they walk back to the bank and they get to the bank and they go, hey, dude, we just foreclosed upon Raymond and his was an FHA insured loan. And I told you the FHA says, hey, bank, Raymond was a good guy. We'll co-sign for him. So what the bank now does is go, hey, HUD, Department of Housing and Urban Development. You backed Raymond with this FHA insured loan saying if he was a bad guy, you'd take care of it. Well, guess what? Raymond was a bad guy. He did get foreclosed upon. Here is this house, and Raymond still owes us 97.5, and you said you would back him up. Pay up. And FHA pays the 97.5 to the bank to make sure they get whole. They get back out of the hole. And the bank says, well, since you paid for the house, here it is. And then the Department of Housing and Urban Development put that property out for sale. And that is where you get a HUD home. And if you are an investor or you've looked at these, you've probably heard this term before where people have a HUD home for sale. 
I guarantee that that HUD home was, in fact, a house foreclosed upon that the previous borrower was an FHA-insured loan. That's how it got there. That bank, after it wouldn't sell, says, oh, Raymond was FHA-insured. Here, HUD, here's your house. Pay me the money. Now, here's the second option. Let's say the sheriff doesn't sell and the bank comes and gets the home and right before they get back to the bank, they go, dude, that was our loan. We made that loan. You know, our mortgage guy sitting in that branch is the one that made that home. We are on the hook. That is a bank-owned home. All right? So understand that the only difference between that HUD and that bank-owned home was probably the underlying loan that got foreclosed upon. Because if the bank made that loan, it's their problem. They sell the house and you get a bank-owned home. If it was an FHA-insured loan, then the bank is going to give it to HUD and then it becomes a HUD home. Now, let me drop the secret on you. Same thing happens with the VA, a VA uh, loan. Did the bank make it or did the VA guarantee it? In that case, the VA sells it and then the VA has a VA home and the USDA. So that same process happens. So when you look at a home for sale and go, well, that says it's bank owned. That means the bank underwrote that loan. Oh, that's a HUD home or that's a VA repo or that's a USDA repo. You can tell where the loan came from by the actual company that's selling it. Now, the one thing that's not listed on here, you might want to write in your notes, is that lender is not allowed to charge any prepayment penalty on an FHA insured loan. Remember, we talked about that P3, where if you give the lender back their money too soon, they charge a penalty. Well, one of the requirements to be an approved FHA uh, lender is you cannot charge prepayment penalties uh, to that borrower. If that borrower can pay you off early, cool, all right? Now, here's the other secret in that. None of the government-sponsored entities or government service entities are allowed to charge a P3. None of them. VA can't, USDA can't. Actually, the SBA, which we're not going to talk about, they can't as well. This is the one case where the government is actually truly here to help you. If you can pay the loan off, that's cool. They're good. All right? The second one of these is called the VA Guaranteed Loan. It's virtually the same concept. The VA does not loan money. There is a lender that will loan the money, and that lender has been approved by the Veterans Administration as being an acceptable lender. So what happens is someone that wants a VA loan can have, has to go and approve and get approved by the VA, and they would use like their DD-214, which says they were discharged honorably, or they're currently active duty, whichever, and that would make them eligible to get a VA loan. And there are some standards as to who can get it, you know, and I don't believe there's any test questions about this. Don't quote me on that. Um, sometimes reservists or often reserve peoples do not qualify but there are situations in where they might, all right? So if a reserve person, I think, has more than six years in the reserve, they might as well. Now, the concept is very similar, except for the fact that the VA actually will loan 100%. 100%. However, there is a funding fee just like there is a upfront premium on the FHA, there is a funding fee for to use the VA's money. 
and how they how this happens is there is a person who goes to the VA and they qualify and they then take that piece of paper that's given to them called a certificate of eligibility. This certificate of eligibility will define the amount of money that that veteran has been approved by the VA and will guarantee that money. Now, there's a little thing here that we're getting a little deep in the weeds, and I'm not really sure how much. That certificate of eligibility actually allows you to borrow four times that amount. The VA guarantees 25%, all right? But the bank can loan as much money as they want, but the lender, or um, the VA is only guaranteeing to protect whatever's on this certificate of eligibility, okay? So that's the first thing, is that the person has to get approved, and then they go to the lender, that is a VA-approved lender, to borrow the money. And that VA actually can, or I'm sorry, that lender then does their process. They do the appraisal, they do all of that. And they come out with their appraisal. Now, here is something that the VA does that to me seems very genius in its inception. And I guarantee if we would have been doing something similar to this, we would not have had any of those issues that we had in 08 with fake appraisals or, uh, you know, false appraisals. Because what the VA does is right before the closing, the VA says, okay, hold on a minute. We're going to send our guy out. I know that you, Mr. Bank, sent your appraiser out. But we don't trust you. We're going to send our guy out as well. And he is going to issue a certificate of reasonable value because since we are the ones that could be on the hook, we want our own guy. So what you have is this appraisal from the bank and then you have this second appraisal called the CRV in which this VA sends their guy out and he's going to come back and go, hey dude, that house is, is worth a hundred grand. And the VA is going to go, okay, go ahead with the deal. Because your guy said it was 100 and our guy said it was 100. There could be situations, which I have seen before, where the bank loaning the money sent their appraisal out and the appraiser comes back and goes, hey, dude, that house is worth 100 grand. And then the VA actually sent their guy out to create this CRV and he came back and said, hey, man, that house is really only worth 90. And the VA goes, okay, bank, you want to do this loan for 100? That's fine, but we are not protecting that loan because our number is not 100. And hopefully that bank is going to go, time out, let's take a look at this. And that's literally what happened in the deal that I was involved in. The CRV came in lower than the bank's appraisal, and we had to stop and relook at everything because the bank said the house was worth 285, and the CRV came in at like 240. wasn't even close to each other. That will pose a problem. Okay, um, when it comes to fees, the loan origination fees paid by the lender, there is a funding fee. I told you this. You have to pay a fee that is subject just to allow you to borrow their money. Now, that fee is actually very high, in my opinion. It's like 2.65%. That's a lot of money just for the right to borrow. Now, you borrow 100%, but you still got to pay that funding fee. The bank can charge discount points. Now, that discount point is actually paid by the user, the veteran himself. 
they can negotiate that the seller may pay that. And the buyer, because they are borrowing 100%, maybe they don't have money, they can actually ask for the seller to help them, but the seller cannot exceed 4% of the loan. So if the borrower is borrowing 100 grand to buy this home at 100% loan to value and says, hey, seller, I need some help. Will you help me pay my closing fee? The seller could not pay more than $4,000 in this example as uh, help because there is a max. Once again, no prepayment penalty. Oh, I told you they can no longer do that. Um, <clears throat> this I like this one. The assumptions are no longer possible without consent. Theoretically, VA can borrow another VA, can assume another VA loan. There's a small fee for that, but it can be done. That one that's coming in still has to qualify, okay? Okay. 